Hey sketchy friends, so thanks for joining me in this episode. So if you caught my last YouTube video, you would have seen me discuss some strategies on how to sketch quicker. And in today's episode, I thought I'd put my money where, <laughs> where my mouth is and see what I can do in 30 minutes. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit terrified because I am definitely a two hour plus kind of sketcher. So I took a little drive out to this place called Prison Break Market. Ironically, it is right opposite a prison, um, but perhaps that's uh, what inspired the name, I'm not sure. So it's got all these cool buildings filled with different foods and crafters selling their wares and craft food, craft alcohol. And yeah, it's just a really funky place. So it's just down the road from me. So I thought, right, okay, it's pretty quiet. So let me just sit here and get my tripod out and see what I can sketch in half an hour. And it's got all this cool kind of farm, old farm stuff around and interesting bits and bobs wherever you look. The architecture obviously isn't all that ornate or anything like that. And I did want to try and find a scene where I felt like I could do something in half an hour. So I wanted to keep this very nice and simple for myself because this really is going to be a challenge. So I thought this scene that I'm looking at just now, I thought maybe this is something I can do. It's got a bit of background information and some strong shapes in the foreground. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. Let, let's see how this goes. So I've got my etcher hot press sketchbook on my lap there, the A5 version. I'm also going to put this countdown timer up in the corner of the video so you can see I am keeping this video in real time because I feel like that's kind of the, the point of the exercise. So off we go then. I've got my mechanical pencil here. So I thought, <laughs> my first uh, thought was I'm just going to do direct watercolour because surely that's like really quick and, you know, I obviously covered that in my video. But then I felt like I needed some pencil lines to help me at least get the basic shapes in. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just drawing in the basic shapes. And I really think like simple is key with this kind of thing. If you've only got 30 minutes, you're out, let's say you're on a trip, you're travel sketching, you've, you know, you've got 30 minutes before your friends or your family get bored with you or they want to move on. You're not going to be able to go into massive detail. You've got to keep it simple. So, you know, find what compels you out of the scene. And it might not be the prettiest bit. It might not be the most interesting bit to other people, but it's not other people's sketchbook. It's your sketchbook. So find what appeals to you, whether it's just strong shapes in a scene or colors or something like that, and just go with it. I wasn't really sure what I was doing here. I just liked the two shapes of the buildings on either side with a bit of background off in the distance. I thought that was something that I could do in 30 minutes. So that's why I chose it. Arguably, I might be playing it a bit safe here, but this is just the first episode. So I am gonna do a few videos on this subject matter. So it'd be interesting to see if I gain a bit more confidence in what I can do in 30 minutes. You'll see me in a bit. I just start to panic. I just feel like, oh my God, 30 minutes. It's just really not very long. What am I going to do? And, um, you know, I put the watercolor on and I'm not letting it dry. And it just, yeah, I mean, you'll see that <laughs> in a minute. Also, my page was flipping all over the place. So then I had to stop, find a bulldog clip and clip my page down. So... Again, there's an element to try and get your stuff prepared if you're gonna sit down and do a 30 minute sketch. I had to pause and get my paints out and fill my water pot up. And it's like, oh, I could have had all of this stuff ready on the table. I had a table next to me. I, yeah, so I think that's one of my key takeaways here. Not that obviously you'll be working against a clock, but in some regards, if the people you're with or whatever, you do only have a 30 minute slot, then you are working against the clock really. So get all your stuff out ready and prepared so that you don't have to stop drawing. 
Okay, so I've got my brush out. I'm obviously happy with the basic pencil lines I've got in there. And I'm just wetting the sky area. I just wanted to try and get a nice kind of soft wet and wet kind of sky going on. And I've got my nice bright blue in my White Knight set. That is the name of the colour, bright blue. So it was a bit of a cloudy sky, so I did want to try and uh, get some clouds in there, if I could, if I could. It's so weird, the weird anxiety and pressure I felt. It was, I just felt like everything I knew just went out of the window and I just panicked. And I could easily have been like, oh well, I won't show you guys this sketch and I'll just, you know, do something where I look a bit more professional. But then I thought, no, that's not, that's not part of the idea, you know, it's, it's kind of fun just to see me freak out and just be like, oh god, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> So I had this vision in my mind of getting a nice wet and wet background and it all being really soft and lovely and hazy. And then, yeah, I don't know, it just didn't, maybe I, I think I added my paint a bit too soon in, into the sky area and it just like bled a bit too much. And initially creates a bit of a mess, but actually, eventually I think it looks all right. But I just wanted to get the idea that there was like a skyline back there because you can actually see across over to the financial district of Johannesburg um, to, to a place called Santon. And yeah, so I just wanted to get the idea that there was like some buildings back there. But then also there's kind of these like yellowy fields in front of it. And I wasn't too convinced that I managed to do that. I actually made a bit of a mess here, but that was fine, I was like, I, I can come back and rescue this in a minute. So if anyone's wondering, uh, I am using my Escoda Reserva paint brush, travel brush here. It's the size 10. Again, I just thought, let me come in with a big brush and just fill in these shapes as quickly as possible and see where we are with things. I didn't really have a great deal of a plan, apart from let's just do direct watercolour sketching. And then I think I quickly realised that that just wasn't going to give me a result that I would personally be very happy with. But we'll get, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And I felt like the colours I was adding here were just too weak and too like, I don't know, too vague. But I guess it was good to get the shapes established, I'm not sure. I know in Mark Tarot Holmes, uh, he has a book called Direct Watercolour. He has an entire book on the subject, as I mentioned in my previous video. And he kind of does advocate for the fact that you should just get the right colour down in the first hit, you know? Which is definitely not what I do in the sketch. <laughs> but uh, I, so now I understand what he's saying because I've tried it and I'm like, oh, this would have been quicker if I just got the right colour in the right place in the first place rather than just starting with lights and building up as you may do if you've got more time. Yeah everything is just feeling very pasty at the moment and I'm really not liking it. But uh, you know I always give my hard myself a hard time at the beginning of a sketch and if you've seen any of my older videos you'll know that I am queen of giving myself a hard time. It basically looks like a five-year-old has done this so far but this is just how sketches start. You can't go from blank page to finished masterpiece in like two seconds. It's just not the way it works. So I always get a bit nervous <laughs> and that still hasn't gone. Even over several years of sketching, it still hasn't left me. I suppose because sometimes my sketches do end up not looking so great, but that happens to everyone. So that's not, you know, that's not unique to me. That happens to everyone. And yeah, I don't know. I guess I was just felt very anxious and outside of my comfort zone and <laughs> yeah, just freaking out basically. Um, every time I put a colour down, I was like, no, that's rubbish. No, I don't like that. No, this is working. So yeah, a bit of, uh, bit of ne negative self-talk going on. 
I did do a video about those kind of things, about being your own worst critic. I've learnt to laugh at my own worst critic now. I've learnt to, learnt to laugh at my head gremlins and just take it on the chin and not take it too seriously. That's that's kind of been my answer to get over it. But I do still get I do still get annoyed with myself though when I've spent two hours on a sketch and then I come away and I'm like, I just don't really like it, which I feel like has happened recently a couple of times when I've been out sketching. I've just been like, what was I doing? Like, why did I, why did I draw like that? Why did I sketch like that? And I do find myself getting annoyed at myself. So I definitely empathize with people that also have the same reaction to doing a bad sketch. Um, but in the same breath, I do my best try and laugh it off and just learn from, learn from it. Every sketch is an experiment. Every sketch is a learning opportunity. I suppose the annoyance comes if I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again in terms of making the same sort of mistakes. So yeah, as I said, I was really not enjoying the just vapid, is that the right word? Vapid colours on this sketch. So I was like, let's go in with this colour. And then I started painting and I was like, oh, I was, oh God, this is, like, this, this is awful. This is not the right colour. Um, <laughs> so yeah, going, going well so far. I just felt like I was back to like being back to like my first kind of few months of sketching. I was like, what am I doing? I, this is just, this is just awful. What is going on? But I swear it does somewhat come together at the end. So uh, do bear with me. Uh, <laughs> you will see that it, it's probably not the best sketch I've ever done, but for 30 minutes I was like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, this is okay. It's not too bad. So that's kind of what I'm clinging on to. It does get better. And you can see here, I am starting to add in darker colors just to really try and, I don't know, just wake this sketch up a bit really. And this green, uh, it's literally just called green, by the way. Uh, this green in my White Knight set is just like one of my favorite colors in the world. I love it so much. So I'm just going wet and wet here on the grassy section outside the building, just trying to give a bit of visual interest. Just dabbing in some Indian gold and letting it react with the green and just kind of seeing what happens really. And then also this foreground grass here, I just wanted to make that really dark and like bold. And I definitely realized that I've got some details wrong on the buildings as well, but you know, I was kind of like, oh well, I'll just make, you know, make my peace with that, it's fine. Um, so this left building as well, just trying to make it a bit more of an interesting color because what I did before just wasn't great. I think I was just hedging, I was just hedging my bets a bit because I didn't know what I was doing. And at this stage, I'm realizing that like, the watercolor is taking a while to dry. It is not very warm and I mean, it was a bit windy, but yeah, it just wasn't, wasn't drying very quickly. And by this stage, I think I knew that I did want to come in over the top with some ink details, just because it's such a simple scene. And again, I feel like what I've done so far is just kind of very basic. I just knew that my comfort zone basically is just is, is drawing with some ink. So I think I just decided by now that I, that's what I was gonna do. I could have tried to put some details in with a brush, but I actually just thought it would be quicker if I just get my pen out and draw some details in ink. And I'm putting some pink on the ground here. I mean, the, the ground cobbles and stuff are somewhat pinky. And again, I just wanted to make it a bit brighter. I'm just really obsessed with bright colors at the moment. So um, I think it plays nicely with the blue of the sky. It's like a nice counterpoint. And I'm kind of not minding if colors are bleeding into each other. I also just quite like that kind of very loose, rough look. So the grass there you can see in the corner is bleeding into the pink. And yeah, I'm just kind of okay with that.
And then under the green at the background, there's like this nice orangey kind of wall. So I just thought I'd put some paint in there. And I basically think I'm done with the watercolor stage at this point. So I'm just showing you my timer here it's, uh, on my phone. I'm not sure you can see it very well, but it says 16 minutes. So I'm about halfway through. So at this point, I've realized I've probably panicked a bit too much and just done everything a bit too roughly. So the second half of my time period is basically going to revolve around me trying to tighten this sketch up a bit and make it not look so awful. So here we go. So just a quickly wanted to show you guys where I'm at. Okay, so I've got the old pen out now and for some reason I've picked up a 0.5 and I start using it and then realize why is this so thick? start uh, drawing things in which is fine for this bit because I'm drawing the frame for the sign and that is quite thick um, but yeah then I start drawing other things and I'm like oh this is yeah quite an obnoxiously thick fine liner which is not gonna work for the rest of this sketch I don't think So yeah, as I start drawing the frame around this door, I realise yeah, I've got the entirely wrong pen, really. So this building I'm drawing here is actually called San Quentin. <laughs> And uh, they do lots of events in this space. So they have like a Formula One Sunday where they show the Formula One racing and everyone gets together and has some drinks and stuff. And they do gigs in here and shows and all kinds of things. So it's really nice to have a space like this so close to home. This is literally a five to 10 minute drive from our house. And yeah, it's really nice to have that kind of available on our doorstep. So I'm switching to a thinner pen now. This is a 0.2 Pigma Micron. Just putting a bit of texture into the doors. I've realized that I've gone wrong and I've drawn this area a little bit different to what it actually looks like in real life. But you know, at this stage, you just have to roll with it and just do what you can to make it look as good as you can do, I guess. So I'm trying not to be too neat with my pen work, you know, I don't want to like completely like precisely outline the shapes of the watercolour. But 
but I do realise I need to get a few details into these buildings just to make them look a bit more interesting. So I've decided that I am going to put just a few bricks in just to indicate the bricks. Otherwise I feel like it just looks a bit bare. And then even just little details like this uh, post in the grass here that can really add some visual interest to an otherwise quite simple scene. And also the paving around the grass as well. That will help to give a bit more of a defined shape to that area. So while I'm doing this, I cannot see my phone uh, and so I have no idea how I'm doing for time at all. So now these kind of blurry shapes here by the water, the water butt, I guess is what it is. I can just really try and tighten those up with the pen and I'm flipping my sketchbook around here just so I can draw a bit of a, a straighter sort of line. It's quite hard to draw that without turning your page. And just doing a few scribbly lines just to indicate a bit of grass texture. And uh, I'm really aware that some of this watercolour still isn't quite dry, so I'm doing my best to not rub my hand all over the place and smudge everything. Now I don't want to draw too much in the background there because I really want to make it look like it's off in the distance. So I'm not really going to touch it. So it does look a tiny bit muddy behind the green there but it almost looks like a cloud actually I think rather than the kind of skyline that I was going for but I was like that's the least of my problems right now I'll just leave that alone I think. <laughs> it shows that there's a bit of background back there so I was kind of like it's okay I'll just leave it. So I'm getting the black brush pen out now. Um, to kind of fill in those signs and just any other areas of of black that I want to put in. And this is another handy way, I think, to firstly get some nice contrast in and it saves a lot of time as well just to fill in certain areas just in solid black. It's obviously a very stylistic approach, but it's one that I'm a quite a big fan of, to be honest. I like the quite graphic look of uh, you know, filling in windows black, for example, and stuff like that. It's not something I always do, but something like this, where I'm on the clock, it's like, right, don't want to mess around with too many details. I'm just going to go straight in with the black brush pen and forget like nuances, you know? definitely feel like I have got a lot looser in the last few months and I think some of the experiments we do over on Patreon has really helped me with that. Um, there was one month in particular called Sketching with Freedom which just unlocked something in my own brain and therefore I do a lot of looser, more experimental, more playful stuff now. Bright, bright colours. Some of the stuff I've been doing at the local casino where we meet once a week um, to sketch because it's got some nice faux Italian architecture there. Yeah, it's just some of my most experimental sketching ever and I just love it. It might not always turn out how I would like it to, but it's so much fun. And to be honest, that's as long as I'm having fun and I'm enjoying what I'm doing, then that's kind of, I mean, that's the main thing really. You know, I'm not doing these kind of sketches to sell them or hang them on the wall. I'm just recording some memories and 
just playing with my materials and just seeing what happens. So, you know, that's and that, that I find that really fun. So if you haven't seen any of my crazy colorful sketches from uh, from the casino, then you can check them out over on Instagram. I think they're mainly on Taria's Sketchy Adventures Instagram. Although there might be some on the Urban Sketching World Instagram as well. I'm a bit rubbish at social media strategy quite clearly because I've now got the two Instagram accounts and I use them interchangeably, which is probably probably not the slickest approach to uh, to social media, but never mind. So uh, just go and follow both accounts. It's fine. Then you'll never miss anything. It'll be fine. So I've got my flat brush out now. Just thought it might be easier to get some of these, just a few like brick textures in really. I'm just going in again with a bit of an Indian gold vibe. Even though that first layer, I don't know if you noticed, but that first layer I put down, I was like, oh my God, that's not the right color because it was very orangey. It was very bright. Do you see how it's just totally calmed down and it became like quite a nice warm stone color. So sometimes that happens with watercolour and you put colour on and you're like, oh my god. Uh, especially the sky as well. If you go back and see initially what the sky looked like when I first put it in, it looked so bright. But now it's dry, it looks like a very reasonable sky colour, basically. So at this stage, I'm just doing anything I can just to try and get some more visual interest into the sketch. So I've, I've got my white gel pen out um, to go over those black areas, a bit of writing on those signs, and just putting a bit of interest into this window. I'm actually not sure if that's even there, to be honest with you, but yeah, I kind of misdrew it anyway. So at this stage, I'll just kind of make it up. It's fine. <laughs> Again, just trying to get a bit more texture into the flat areas of colour that I've got, just to make it look a bit more interesting. And now I've got my Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen. So you can see how, uh, you know, from my video on strategies on how to sketch quickly, I'm basically ignoring it <laughs> and just doing doing whatever I want. So that's not quite, that wasn't quite the aim, to be honest. So I did, my strategy coming into this was to use the direct watercolor sketching um, situation. So you can see now we're at the three minute, 45 second mark. I was gonna use that and then it just, I started with that and it just did, wasn't going well, basically. Maybe just the scene I chose or the fact that I'm just completely inexperienced with that method of sketching. But it was nice to start with the blocks of watercolor and then draw over the top. So I do recommend trying that out. I think that is a really nice strategy. And it's a bit less overwhelming than um, just thinking, oh my God, I can only use watercolor to sketch this scene. So yeah, as you saw, I just put in some very basic big shapes in the pencil just to mark the areas. And I know even Mark Tara Holmes does that sometimes with his um, direct watercolor. He will still put some pencil lines in just to make sure everything is where it should be. And then, yeah, just put the basic tones of watercolor down, wait for it to dry, uh, preferably. <laughs> and then go in with some pen. So I think that's kind of worked out okay. I know that I've got about three minutes left and I'm sort of looking at it and like, I don't really know what to do, to be honest. I mean, it's sort of, it is what it is at this stage. So I'm just putting a few hints of purple underneath those paving stones uh, or that curb that's going around the grassy area there, just trying to anchor it into the ground a bit more. Little touches like this can actually add a surprising amount of I don't think realism is the word that I'm looking for, but it just that makes it look a bit more convincing, adding just some tiny little shadow areas. And do you know what, guys? You know, it's it, obviously it's not as good as a sketch that I might be able to do in two hours, but I don't hate it. And I thought I was going to, and I thought this was going to be a complete waste of time, and I was going to scrap everything and just start again fresh you know that I wouldn't use this video because I just felt like it was going so badly but actually I you know it is a simple sketch but this is totally achievable to do you know if you were traveling or on holiday 
just to capture a little simple scene like this, a little memory of where you were, what you were up to, and it took half an hour. And I think that's okay, you know? So my top tips for doing something like this is if you can have your materials out ready, if you're sitting on a bench or next to a table or something, just, you know, have your water in your pot ready, have your cloth out, have a couple of pens and a couple of brushes that you're going to use and, you know, just be ready so you're not faffing around or anything. And you can use your phone to set up the scene if you want. That's always a good way to find the edges of a scene so that you know what you're, what you're sketching and perhaps what composition you're after. And using a pencil just to get the basic shapes in is a great way to start. And as I said, putting in those base colours of watercolour and then sketching on top is actually, is actually a quite an effective method. And I do have a few other videos showing that kind of method, but nothing that nothing that's like this, where it's literally is 30 minutes and we're done. So I hope this can show you what is achievable in 30 minutes. You know, this is obviously my, my style. It's my comfort zone. I could do better than this probably, but if I only had 30 minutes and then we're moving on, I'd be quite happy that I have something like this in my sketchbook. Okay then guys, that's the 30 minutes up. I'm, I don't hate it, so I'm gonna say that's a win in my book. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's a very simple scene, but I just wanted to start off with something quite easy or not too crazy to start off with and see, you know, what we could do. So I'm hoping in the next episode, obviously I'll go somewhere different. Uh, we don't have an overwhelming amount of architecture here to sketch but I'll find something hopefully interesting to show you guys and let's see I'll try and find I'll try and use uh, I'll have every intention of using a different strategy for, <laughs> for the next sketch but I might panic and it might go out the window but let's see what happens so thanks for joining me for this episode I hope it was fun to watch and I'll catch you in the next one